We've been getting a lot of questions submitted through our website lately, and uh, the question I've been getting asked the most is, is how do I rig uh, my intruder shanks? And I got to tell you, I still rig my intruders old school style like this. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what is old school style, what defines it, uh, how do you rig it, and why. So, as you can see, what I have here is a signature series squid row. Um, it's tied on uh, one of our one and three quarter inch steely shanks. And uh, you know, this fly actually has a top and a bottom silhouette to it. Um, as you can see, I want this saddle crest to ride on the top of the fly in the water, and uh, this being the bottom of the fly. So I actually want this fly to ride true, like this in the water, where the saddle crests are on the top. And once again, it's tied on one of our one and three quarter inch steely shanks. This is a shank that's been designed in old black up-eyed salmon style hook uh, where we got an up-eyed here. We've developed a nice platform base for our lead eyes with this shank. And, uh, and we got a post that comes out, a straight post that comes out the back for our tube to connect to. Um, so our leader passes through the up-eyed shank. Then down the center of the fly, we spit our, split our saddle crest down the middle. And the then leader then passes through the fly and through a little mono loop that we have tied in in the back. You can see that. Peter passes through the up eye, through the center of, our, center of our saddles, out the mono loop in the back, then to our hook, where what we have is a plastic, one of our tube connectors. See, it's a plastic tube. Peter passes through that. And then what I've done is, is I've tied a, a, a loop knot here. It doesn't really matter. I prefer a saltwater loop knot. And uh, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to take the, the knot portion of that loop, pull it up into the plastic tube connector, where we still have the loop out here exposed, where a hook is able to ride freely like this on the loop. And, and let's talk a little bit about, uh, about uh, this, this hook here for a second. This is a straight-eyed bait-style hook that we've had designed for our site. Um, you want to be really, really careful when you're fishing, uh, fishing um, this old school style with the loop knot that you use a straight eyed hook. Um, these bait style hooks are designed for the leader to pass and pull straight on the shank. Um, as you notice, most of, say, the Gamagatsu style hooks, they're an up eyed bait hook. Those hooks are designed to be snelled uh, for bait fishermen, where, the, where, the, where their leader actually passes through the eye and pulls straight on the shank of the hook. So if we're using them for our fly methods where we have that up-eyed hook and we're tying with a clinch knot or a loop knot to that up-eyed hook, the, 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 the hook or the, the knot is actually leveraging off the top uh, of the eye of that hook and that's not how those hooks are designed um, to, to be pulled on. So anyway, once again, straight-eyed hook where the leader's passing or pulling true to the shank of the hook. So important note. So Pull our fly up here, we can take a look at it. Once again, leader passing through the eye of the hook, passing through the center of the fly, through our mono loop. Pull our plastic tube connector up to the fly, and we're just going to push it onto that straight post on the back, positioning our hook and holding our hook to the fly itself, just like that. And I like my hook point to ride up. Uh, I feel like it keeps me out of the rock some. So usually once I push that post on, I hold my fly like this with my, my saddle crest pointing to me and my lead eyes this way. And I just can then turn that tube and position that hook so that hook is riding perfectly true with the hook point up. It's that simple, just like that. And be assured my hook point is going to point up. We're in good shape. So, now that we know what old school is, we know how to rig it. Let's talk a little bit about why. I guess one, um, I guess because I was a part of this whole uh, intruder thing, is the fact that I just enjoy tying 
on a hook shank. Um, I like tying on a shank. I think the fly looks better on a shank, and it's as simple as that. So that being reason one. Um, practicality, uh, reason two is the simple fact that I can easily change my hook with one knot. Um, you know, this little loop knot here, I can change my hook and be back fishing within 30 seconds or so and have a nice hook point. Spend $50 to $100 in gas getting to where you're going. Hundreds, not thousands of dollars on rods, reels, boats, and everything else. And the most important thing between you and the fish is this hook point. So very seldom do you see me spending a lot of time with a hook sharpener sharpening hooks. I spend the 25 or 50 cents, change my hook out, and make sure I got a perfect point between me and the fish. It's as simple as that. Um, reason two is the, flack, is the fact that with old school style, I have my leader passing over the top of the shank where I have this heavy steel shank below my leader that's going to help my flies like this that have a top and a bottom silhouette ride true. Um, just because this steel shank is below my leader, um, I guess it should be quite obvious that this fly is going to want to ride with the steel shank down, allowing my fly to ride true in the water like this. So reason two is when I'm fishing a, uh, a silhouetted fly like this, I can, I can help my fly ride true. Whereas, say, with a tube, um, you know, the fly passes through the center of the tube with a tube fly, and that, that, that tube wants to ride freely on the leader, not really positioning my fly in the water. So with a tube, you have to make sure you have lead eyes and placing your materials in certain ways, and still sometimes the fly doesn't want to ride true uh, in the water the way it would on a shank. So reason two is the fact that, that um, I just want this fly to ride true in the water, and this helps it, helps it do so. Um, Reason, reason three would probably be um, the fact that with this method, I can change my hook positioning um, by changing the size of my loop knot, changing the, the length of my tube connector. I can then change the positioning of my hook. If I have very, very tentative fish that are coming up and nipping at the back of my fly, I can increase the size of my loop knot, increase the length of my tube, and I can pull this hook way back here to the back of the fly where that fish finds that hook when they're coming up and nipping at the back of it. If I have very, very aggressive fish that are attacking the center of the fly, I can pull that hook right up into the fly itself by shortening the length of this knot and by shortening the length of my tube. And be assured when I have the really, really aggressive fish attacking the center of the fly, I don't have that hook point way out here in the back where I'm entirely missing the fish or when I do hook them, I pin them on the outside of the face. So the ability to be able to adjust the hook placement uh, in, in the fly itself is, is important to me as well. Um, but probably the most important reason uh, why I prefer the old school style, simple fact that when I do hook a fish, fish jumps or starts shaking his head, the fly breaks free from the tube, separates from the hook, my fly breaks free, and I'm connect, connected to the fish simply by the hook. I don't have this big heavy fly out here. I fish a lot of large lead eyes. And I don't have these big lead eyes out here shaking and leveraging on my hook as the fish is shaking his head and jumping. I like the fact that it breaks free. I'm connected to the fish simply by the hook. You know, there's a reason those bass fishermen you see on TV when they're using those big, heavy, lead-headed jigs, there's a reason that when they hook a fish, you see them hook the fish, put the rod point in the water, start pulling on it real hard, and they don't want that fish to be able to get up and jump and let that big, lead-headed jig leverage around and pull that hook free. Um, I like the same thing. So, hook a fish, fly breaks free, I'm connected to the fish simply by the hook. Very, very important to me. So, let's compare that with um, what I like to call retriever style. Um, you know, when I first took um, my intruders and tried to market them, uh, I went through George Cook with uh, Solitude Flies, and um, he told me I couldn't sell an old school style fly, which he's probably right. Most consumers don't want to mess around with all those extra parts and pieces. So when we first took the intruder to the market, we took it to the market and tied the flies where the hook was connected, the trailer hook was connected with a piece of braid. Here I'm using a piece of tough line. Doesn't really matter any kind of braid. Some people are using wire and all kinds of stuff now to connect their trailer hooks when tying this retriever method, this retriever style method. Um, I still use it some when I'm tying flies that are in the round and fishing a cone. You can see that it doesn't really matter how this fly rides in the water, it's going to look the same. 
so I'm not really worried about uh, hook positioning and placement to, to help my fly ride true. Um, it's tied on a straight-eyed shank. You can see that. Um, so my cone rides straight on the straight eye and my fly rides true in the water. And since I'm using a straight-eyed shank, I'm not able to obviously pass my leader through the eye and through the fly the same way I would old school style without the leader leveraging on the fly funny. And once again, if I were to use an upright hook and try to use this cone, the upright hook would make my cone ride funny and not allow my fly to ride true. So I do use this retriever style method when I'm fishing flies in the round uh, and with the cone. Um, we'll actually do a segment on this steely cone stuff at some other point, but, but just to clarify the difference between the two. Retriever style, um, Designed simple, the simple fact that uh, when tying a commercial fly, it made it easier for the consumer and, and, and less complicated, and therefore you sell more flies. But um, still prefer the old school style. Let's take a look um, at a broken down version here. I got a skeleton version of this hook. Um, give you a little bit better idea, kind of recap what we're looking at once again here. So here we have one of our two inch steely shanks. Um, it should be really easy to see this leader passing through the up eyed down the shank of the hook we got this mono loop attached to our shank with a nice thread base got our mono loop coming out the back i like the mono it's kind of stiff it's easy to find when threading it through threading your leader through the fly so mono loop passing through the eye out the mono loop in the back we got this nice straight post for our tube to slip onto here's our tube once again here's a blue one they come come in different colors Got our loop knot, pull the knot portion of that loop up into our tube connector, pull on our leader, slide that connector right up where we can push it onto the post. Once again, turn our fly straight, position our hook so the hook point is up. There you go. Old school style. Um, once again, something I prefer. The way I still tie my intruders, most of us do, um, and there's a reason for it. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope this helped answer a lot of questions out there. Like I say, once again, we've had a lot of people inquiring about this. Um, give it a try. I think it'll work for you. I think you'll like it, and it'll be the way you